Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. It's time to take another look at a simple project on our countdown till Christmas. Today I thought I would make a candle snuffer. We made a candlestick, we might as well make a way to put out the candle besides using your fingers. For this project I'm going to cut the cone out of a piece of 16 gauge sheet metal and I've already made a paper pattern and traced it onto my sheet metal of what I think the cone should look like. This is three and a quarter inches across the widest part of the cone and the cone is two and a half inches tall plus a little tab here that we're going to make a ring out of. This will then have another ring in it that will attach to the handle so there will actually be three parts to the whole project. So first thing I want to do is cut out the sheet metal pattern and of course you can do this with a chisel if that's all you have. You can do it with a little bandsaw if you have that. You can do it on a shear. Just whatever it is you have that makes this job go reasonably easy for you. It shouldn't take too long to cut this out. Now that we have the basic pattern cut out, it needs to be cleaned up. File or a grinder, I'm going to go do that real quick so you don't have to listen to it, and then we'll meet you at the forge. In addition to our little cone that will be the actual snuffing part of the candle snuffer, I'm going to use a little piece of 3 8 square bar for a handle. And this is 8 inches long. This is another piece I just found in the scrap pile, and I'm just going to use what I found. I have no specific requirements in mind other than it'll be a handle, with a cone on a little link of chain so that it can pivot so you can do candles up high or down low or wherever you are and it'll always hang down. So whatever you have on hand, that should work for you. So for, for those of you who aren't tired of me screwing up the metric measurements, we'll call this 205 millimeters long. And what is that, about nine millimeters square bar. Doesn't really matter, use round bar, use something heavier. We're gonna draw this out to make a nice handle anyway. So we should completely change the way it looks. Then to make the little ring out of, maybe one, maybe two, we'll see what it needs, I've got a piece of 3 16 round bar. Now here in the U.S. we just finished an election, and that means people have these little yard signs out. And if they haven't taken them down in your neighborhood, that's where this stuff comes from. It's a little hoop that holds those plastic yard signs. Ask permission first, but most people will let you have this stuff, and you can get several years supply in one afternoon collecting yard signs. Now I just want to make a couple of rings on this because I'm not real sure if I'm going to use one or two. I'm just rolling them up around these scrolling tongs. I think I'm going to go three or four wraps here and that gives me all sorts of rings that I can cut loose on this. I'm just going to kind of even that all up. But that'll give us several rings if we need them. We'll let those cool. Then all we got to do is just run a hacksaw across there and they all fall apart. Now the first thing I want to do is roll up this little tab because I don't really want it a big flat tab. I want a round section and I'm just going to forge this into a a little round bit here. I don't really want that to be a tube, so I'm going to keep going until it rolls all the way up on itself. Might have to tuck one side down a little bit. I want it to act like a solid piece, even though it's technically not. And as it gets more solid, you can work on it a little bit more aggressively. But I'm going to keep it in the round so that it doesn't open up. That's 
pretty much what I want with that. Now I want to actually bend that over into a ring. And here's another place we can just use the little scroll pliers. I want to roll that up and try and tuck that into the inside there if there's enough room. That's really all I want there. I may drift that just to make sure that my rings will fit through there. So little stuff gets really fiddly. I think that's one reason I like to make big stuff in the shop more often than little stuff. There we go. That's much better. Just what I want. Now let's turn this around. Let's roll up the cone. Now you can start rolling this up in a big swedge, or you can go over the step of the anvil where you've got support from two sides to start rolling that up. Just whatever works for you. It's going to want to pucker up here, so pay good attention to that spot. It's easy to close up the big end, but the small end is going to argue with you. I actually have a swedge block with a tapered cone in it, but it's much smaller than I want this to be. So we're just going to do it all at the anvil here. I'm going to try and make that round. Now you could make the cone bigger, overlap it and rivet it. You could braise it together. Do all sorts of things, but for this project it just doesn't need any strength there, so I think just butting the seam together is fine. Now once you kind of have it rounded up, you can make a lot of repairs at the, the horn of the anvil. My horn is awfully big and chunky though, so it's, I can't get it on there very far. This cone mandrel is actually better than my horn is for this. A lot of this can be done cold once you get most of the kinks out. Like trying to bring this together in the final shape, I think it will do a lot of that. Yeah, that pretty well got it, but I'll probably do some of it cold. So that's pretty much what we want there. These didn't quite come together just right, so my pattern was a little off, but that'll be easy to file off. And my ring isn't quite straight up. That's just up to you if you want it straight up. So I'm going to stand that up just a little bit. So I'm just going to stand this up just a little bit to make it more what I want here. Also gets me a chance to get in there and close that up. So that's the cone that's the actual snuffer part of the candle snuffer. Let's make the handle. I'm going to start with the handle end and I'm going to want a little ring handle on this. So I'm going to start with half face blows at the edge of the anvil and draw this out to about a quarter inch diameter and a little taper. like any other 
drawn out taper, start by drawing it out square to get the mass where you want it. Then in the next heat we'll go to octagon and then round. all offset to one side front to back but centered left to right or vice versa so now we'll do a little curly cue on there and then bend this into a ring Put a little curl on there. And forge that not quite 90 degrees. And finish it up over the horn. We've done a lot of this kind of stuff on all sorts of different tools before. So it shouldn't be anything new. Kind of a bread and butter operation for blacksmith. That's all we need. I want to draw this out so it has a nice taper. Leaving about three inches of the original handle untouched. I probably want to take this down to about a quarter of an inch near the end, but I'm going to leave a little bit untouched at that end, and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm going to fuller in where I want to stop drawing out here. that up because I think in the long run this part of the handle I'll want round. That gives me something I can work up to here. I just want to draw back from the shoulder I created there. Now I want to just taper this up to this point where I started. You can do a fair amount of this at the horn, but I think there's more control, although slower going, at the face of the anvil. Now I envision this with a round handle down here. I'm going to probably put a twist in up here, so I'll leave it square. So that's the next thing I'll do is round this up. So just like always, we turn the square taper into an octagon taper. We can start rounding it up. Keep an eye on it as you turn it around. If it looks fatter in one dimension, it's getting egg shaped instead of round. So you want to turn that side up and work it down.
Now I want to spread that lump out so it's the same thickness as the bar, but so it also so it gets into a round end here. That's pretty much all I need that to do right now. Now I want to punch a hole in the end. It's a relatively small hole. It's really easy to mess up a punch doing this. The smaller the punch, the more they want to bend. Plus that cools down so quick, we're going to have to get it hot again. Punches just like any other punched hole, other than the delicate punch, but that went pretty smoothly. So there's a hole we can put a ring through to, to hang the snuffer from. I think I'm going to drift that a little bit bigger though, just to guarantee it's a good size. I'll just put a quarter inch drift in there. That should guarantee us plenty of space. And I'll do a little cleanup either at the grinder or with a file around here to make that ring a little prettier. Ended up chunkier than I envisioned. But let's turn it around and let's put a twist back in the square part of the handle. So you can put any kind of a fancy twist in this you might like. And typically I'd have the torch on hand, I think I'll go one more, to take care of any cold spots. But in the interest of trying to keep this simple, we'll just do it with the heat from the forge. So that's pretty much our twist. All I want to do now is straighten things up a little bit. A block of wood to rawhide mallet is a good way to do this. It smokes and it stinks, but it keeps you from messing up your twist. First thing I notice is that this isn't quite in the same plane as the ring, and I think it looked better. So I can twist that up. Just some very minor straightening is all it needs. And pretty much that's it. Let's do a little bit of cold work here. So here's that swedge block with the tapered cone. It actually fits better than I thought it would. It looks small, but once we're all rolled up, I'm mostly trying to clean up this end here because it's still just a little bit puckery. Very gentle, it'd be easy to crush this. Make sure it still looks round. And I'm pretty happy with that.
And it doesn't hurt to take just a little bit of sandpaper and make sure there's not a burr on the end of the rings. I think we only need one of these. But it's easy enough to make several at the same time in case you decide you want a, more of a chain than just one ring. So the next thing we have to insert that in there. Pretty easily done. Hold it in a pair of pliers. Just give it a little twist until it'll go in. And that pivots very nicely there. And if you wanted more rings, you could just add more. We'll close all this up. So you get an idea of what two rings might look like. But I think one's going to be enough. So now our handle has cooled. We just need to check it for straight. If it's got a little bit of a wobble to it, you can still do some of this cold. But be careful right here where this little tab is because that's a good that's a good place for a stress crack to develop if you start bending that back and forth. So if you have anything that's really off there, probably ought to get it hot again. But it looks pretty good. First thing I want to do is I'm going to run a countersink in here just to knock the edges off. And that'll make the ring spin a little easier. But this is way too big, so I'm going to go ahead and file that down, I think. And I did most of this off camera. It's probably about 15 minutes worth of filing. You can certainly grind it. And in hindsight, you could leave a smaller pad. You could also just bend a ring on there. It doesn't have to be closed like this. That's just what I chose to do. But I think I will go ahead and heat this back up, get it red hot, and then wire brush it just to make it blend evenly with everything else. Well, here are three component parts plus a couple of extra rings, but I don't think we're going to need them. I think we have plenty of room here. I also went ahead and waxed this while you guys weren't watching. So we put these two things together. Well, that might have done it. So this might swing a little bit more freely if it had two rings, but it might also be harder to control and get down on top of the candle just right. And of course, if you've never seen a candle snuffer like this, it just sits over the top of the candle for a few seconds. It suffocates it by cutting off all the oxygen. And then you don't have to blow it out and blow wax all over the furniture or squeeze it with your fingers. Just a nice little touch. And if you've got candles up on a mantle where they're a little harder to reach, because this pivots, you can reach up and bring it straight down on the candle just fine. So that's it for today's project. I want to thank Frank Schwartz, JF, and the Denator, I think that says, for their suggestion to make a candle snuffer. I hope you enjoyed the project. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Make sure you come back tomorrow for another super simple project on our countdown to Christmas. But then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.